Good morning, New Life Church. It's a beautiful Sunday, amen? amen? I have a few announcements before we dive deeper into worshiping the Lord together. March 2nd, we have breakfast with pastor. So we are inviting everyone who is new or fairly new to New Life Church or has been here forever and you still want to meet the pastors to talk to us will be at the, in the community room, so join us for breakfast with pastor. We'll also appreciate it if you go to newlifema.com and register so that we know you are coming. If you don't get to do that, just show up. We'll be there. Amen? We have a prayer team here at New Life Church, and they meet every first Saturday of the month to pray together. So this month, they are praying for children and grandchildren. So anyone who wants to join them, it's also on March 2nd. Please join them downstairs in the prayer room. If you haven't checked out our prayer room, you are missing out. It's incredible. Uh, be there and let's pray together for our children and grandchildren. And if you want to be part of the team, talk to Sona or talk to me. Amen? Uh, Vision Saturday. On March 16th, we have what we call Vision Saturday for our Dream Team members. Now, our Dream Team is everyone who serves here at New Life Church. And if you also want to serve and you haven't started serving yet, you are welcome to join us on March 16th at 9 a.m. Please scan the QR code and register. As you can see, there's free breakfast and there's child care, so you have no excuse. Show up. Let's all uh, share our vision with you and join us in where the Lord is taking us as a church. Amen? Young adults. Are, th are there any young adults in this building? On March 17th, we are having Rooted Revival again. Um, it is a service by young adults for everyone in New Life Church. Doors will be open at 6.30 and the service starts at 7. Join us. Let's worship the Lord together. Amen? Amen. Can you stand as we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. So, I don't know about you, but for me, these past couple of weeks have been very difficult. But God is faithful. And the cool thing is, he always brings his word to life in those moments when we need it the most. And one of the verses that the Lord reminded me is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Notice that it didn't say I will bless the Lord when I'm happy. It says I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because Romans 8 tells me that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Amen? And then verse 2 says, My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. And then verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So why don't we do that together this morning? Let's magnify the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So Father, we magnify you today. We lift up your name. We glorify you because you are God Almighty. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Your word reminds us that when the sun comes out in the morning, it tells us that your promises, your covenant that you have with your people is still yes and amen. And so we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our savior. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for being our father. So Lord, we declare this morning that our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done today on earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, we have come. We have come as your people, anticipating what you are going to do among us today. We declare, oh God, that we are here to receive all that you have for us today. Our hearts are ready, our minds are receptive, 
and we ask oh God that you will speak and you will minister to our hearts today give us today our daily bread oh God we worship you today we give you praise we honor you for being in our midst in Jesus name amen God, no other God can be called a father, no other God can be called a friend, no other God can be called redeemer, no other God's coming back again, how we love. And how we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name, how we love, how we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name, oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Sing no other God. No other God can be called our Father. No other God can be called our friend. No other God can be called Redeemer. No other God's coming back again. And how we Glory, glory to 
name of Jesus right now. We know that there is healing. We know that there is victory. We just simply need to call on your name and you answer us, Lord. Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. 
we dwell on the truth, oh God, that you are the victorious one. You are the risen king. You are the lamb that was slain and that rose again. And now is seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, we exalt you. We bless your name. You are above all. There is no other besides you. The living God, we worship you. Worthy is your name, Lord. Worthy is your name. Lord, your people, who are gathered here today, we say, worthy is your name, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forever. More sing it out. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Just 
fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory. Pray. 
just want to say thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our Deliverer. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being the one who was and who is and who is to come. Thank you, oh God, that you are here in this moment among your people. So we worship you this morning and we give you the praise and adoration that is due your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, mighty God. So in this moment, in this prayer moment, we are going to pray for each other as we do every Sunday. If, there, if you have a need, if you have a need where you will need somebody to pray for you, you don't even have to speak it out. You just raise up your hand and the person will come and pray. And the Bible says that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. So as we stand together and pray, guess what? The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his presence, he is here. And the truth is when two agree on a thing, it is established. So the person that's coming to pray with you, when they touch you and pray with you, it is established in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So raise your hand if you need a prayer, if you need anybody to pray for you. And then let's let every believer in this room look around and see if there's somebody next to you who needs a prayer and please go pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, we stand together as your people this morning. And we thank you, oh God, that you are in the midst of your people. We thank you, oh God, that you are here. And you are here to minister to the needs of your people. And we thank you that we can come boldly to your throne room of grace. That we might find mercy in time of need. So Father, you know everyone whose hand is raised. You know their need physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so Lord, we release it unto your throne room. Now Lord, you will touch, you will heal, and you will deliver. And Father God Almighty, that you will do what only you can do among them. So today we just raise up our voices, oh God. And Father, I lift Rhonda into your mighty hand, asking, oh God, that you will visit her in that hospital room and bring healing. Your word says, by your stripes, we are healed. And your word again says, you sent forth your word and you healed them and delivered them out of the grave. So Father, send forth your word in that hospital room and bring healing. And Lord, I bring Niada to your hand. And I ask, oh God, that you will take hold of her and bring healing, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that by the blood of Jesus, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Every disease is healed. Every infirmity is removed. And every broken heart is healed today. We thank you, oh God, that you are here. We thank you that you are ministering to your people. We thank you, oh God, that you can do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine. So take your glory, take your honor, and take your praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. So, Lord we stand and we say thank you because we know that when we pray your ears are attentive to our voice so thank you for the answered prayers thank you for the miracles that we will hear about thank you oh God for the testimonies that will rise up from this moment we give you praise we exalt you we honor you we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seat. Well, good morning again. I'm Theophilia Afal. I'm the discipleship pastor here at New Life Church. As you can see, I'm not Pastor David. He's not here today. 
Um, uh, the ushers, if you can come up. We want to welcome all of you to New Life Church this morning. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us. We want to especially welcome our first-time guests. If it's, your, if it's your first time here in a long time or just your first time here today, we want to place a packet in your hand. And so if you don't mind raising up your hand as the ushers come, and they will give you the packet. And at the end of service, if you will fill out the card in it and bring it to the community room, we have some wonderful ladies in the community room, actually men and women, not just ladies, in the community room who will welcome you and put a gift in your hand. We do want to meet you and get to know you. Amen? Amen. Um, I have a couple of announcements that I want to reemphasize. This coming Saturday is May, uh, not May, March. Ooh, it's March. <laughs> this coming Saturday is March 2nd. We have breakfast with pastor happening in the community room. Now, breakfast is pastor is for everyone who is new here a New Life Church. We want to get to know you. We want to meet you and talk to you a little bit about who we are and also get to know who you are. So if you are fairly new or you've been here forever and you want to come, you are welcome to come. We do ask that you register at newlifema.com to let us know that you're coming. And if for some reason you're unable to do that, you can also show up. We'll be there to welcome you. Amen. So join us May 2nd, Breakfast with Pastor. Oh, my God, I said it again. March 2nd. This coming month, March 2nd, in the community room. Amen? Amen? March 1st is a Friday. We have training for um, First Impressions team here at New Life Church. Now, when we talk about First Impressions, we are talking about our greeters at the door, our parking lot team. We are talking about our welcome team in the community room, the welcome center areas, and then we have area hosts and hostesses. They are all coming together on Friday, March 1st, for a training. So if you are part of the team and you haven't signed up yet, we, are, we want you to show up and let's train together and serve together. And if you are not part of the team and you want to be part of the team, we, you are welcome to join us on Friday at 6.30, okay? Right here in the community room. Tonight is a miracle service, right? Revival night. Tonight is Revival Night with Evangelist Martellus. So if you join us 6.30 and right here in the community room, you will not regret you came. Amen. Amen. Now I have the singular pleasure to invite Pastor Nathan Rakes, our executive pastor, to bring the word of God to us. Um, thank you, Larry. Pastor David is actually enjoying his time right now in Florida. He's preaching uh, at the church that my parents are uh, pastors at. He's preaching their missions conference, and you know how he loves missions. So uh, he, he texted me this morning, he sent me a picture of my family who's in the band and stuff. He's like, oh, they're missing you, buddy. I was like, thanks. And he said, praying for you guys. He's praying for you uh, that you would hear from the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to go to Galatians chapter 5. Uh, you can turn there, and as you get there, I'll just give a little introduction here. Today's message is called Walk by the Spirit. And actually, as I look out on this congregation, I see a lot of young adults, and so I, I would be amiss to not say this. You heard of March 17th, we have our Rooted Revivals Young Adult Service, which everybody's invited to, but actually, immediately following this service, uh, we are having some rice. Yes, rice, and, uh, and just hang out, chill, play some games for the young adults. So if you are a young adult and you, as soon as this service is over, we'll head to the community room and just hang out. So I don't want to miss that invite. You're invited. Be there. It'll be fun. We'll have all kinds of rice. It'll be great. If you don't like rice, um, well, we'll have water. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, love to have you. Love to have you. So today's message, Walk by the Spirit. Uh, pastor's been talking. He's going, been going through uh, our core values, which we've currently been in, the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been really good. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, he brought me 
down there, and we were walking around holding hands together, right? And, and the illustration was that, that the Holy Spirit is, is walking with you. And so today, he, as we were talking, he's like, hey, what are you, you going to preach? He's like, why don't you talk about the fruit of the Spirit? And, and so walking in the Spirit, Paul, Paul is addressing a major issue in the church of Galatia that, to be honest... I think sometimes we deal with, not, not just New Life Church, but like we as people, like we deal with, which is that we mix the fact that Jesus Christ alone saves, but then we add to it, but I need to do all of these good things. And we put some pressure and even some power into our own hands saying, if I do not then I will not. If I do not do X, Y, and Z for the Lord, then I am not good enough. And and the reality is, you're right. You're not good enough by your own power, by your own strength, by your own. It's not by what you have done, but it's by what he has done. And so Paul's addressing this in in the church, and and he's telling them, and he's like, hey, listen, it's not by, they, they wanted to obey the letter of the law. Like, they wanted to obey every, but it's, the law is just revealing how wicked we are. The law is revealing how, how not perfect we are. And so Paul's addressing, he's like, listen, you could try to, you're trying to follow all these things, but, but this is not what saves you. What saves you is faith in Jesus alone. Amen. Would you stand with me as we honor God's word? And we're going to read together Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. And it says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Of which I have for I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word brings truth. Your word is truth. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would move in our hearts today. Help us hear your word Lord, let us respond to your word. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. The question that I read when I read that scripture, the question I have is how do I I walk by the Spirit? What does that mean? He says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. But when I look at my own life, I'm like, so I see the flesh still popping up. You know, I see, I see some anger still rising up. I see some, some things still rising up. And so I'm like, man, am, am I missing it? Like, am I seeing the spirit in my life? Am I seeing the fruit of the spirit in my life? How do I walk by the spirit? And knowing the truth or knowing something and the action it be two different things, right? Uh, I'll take it to a light note for a second. Superstition. I heard a, uh, heard a funny quote from a football player who was actually quoting a TV show. He said, I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious. It's like, all right. 
<laughs> like, we're, we are definitely that way, right? Like, um, I don't know about you, I, I play sports, and for whatever reason, when I, when I play softball, like, I got to wear the same shorts. It's like, does it really help? Does it really? But because that one game, that one time, hit the, hit the ball nice, you know, had some good throw, got to wear those shorts. It's like, it's my superstition. It doesn't, it's not real, but I do it. You do, you do the same thing. Okay, let, let, let me throw you this one. Um, I have, I have three kids. One of them is David, who I think is possibly in kid's life. And anyway, he's seven years old. When he was a little younger, there was one year that he broke seven mirrors in one year. Now, if you know the superstition, the superstition is every mirror you break, it's seven years of bad luck. Like, that would be bad. That's 49. You know what I mean? That would be bad. No bad luck yet. You know, knock on wood. Another superstition, right? It's like, we don't really believe it, but we do it, right? Like, we don't really, it's not really, but we do it. We know it's not true, yet we fall into this spot. Okay, hear me, hear me. We do this with Christ, right? You had a good, you, man, last week, if you, were you here last week? Woo, last week was good, okay? God was here. It was nice. I have a question for you. Are you sitting in the same seat? Okay, you know, right? Not everybody. Some of you are like, no, I didn't. Good, 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 good. But we're creatures of habit. It's not always like a superstition. But like, we do it. We're like, oh, I'm going to sit in the same seat because I, I want the same result. I'm going to do the same thing so I can get the same result. When I, when I go on vacation with, with my family, often my dad and I go fishing. And uh, I... I try to have a practice of every morning I get up and I read my Bible and pray, um, even on vacation. And so last year, first day we go out, I got up early enough that I read my Bible and I prayed and went out on the boat and caught some fish. Like, all right, this is good. Like, this is nice. The, the next day, I have to admit that I woke up really late. My dad was already at the boat, like getting ready to leave me. And so I'm I just got up, I ran down, I grabbed a snack, like, here we go, I'm running down there. I didn't catch a lot of fish that day. <laughs> and so I'm sitting in the boat, I'm like, cast your rod on the other side. You know, like, I'm trying to get my scripture in, right? I'm like, let's, it's not working. But, like, I'm thinking, like, is the Lord punishing me because I didn't, he's not, he's not punishing you for no, you know, for not reading the Bible to no fish. Like, he's... but we, but we treat God like that. We think if I don't do things a certain way, if I, don't, if I don't do exactly like I'm supposed to, then he's just ready to pow. But he's a loving God. He's a kind and gracious father. We had a great time at the altar. Ah, I want to stand in the same spot, see if I can get the same feeling. Listen, 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 listen. listen. God is infinite. And he wants you to experience him in a new way today that you have not yet experienced him. You thought feeling his love last week was real good, and it was, but he wants to show you his faithfulness today. He wants to show you his compassion tomorrow. You get what I'm saying? Like his, his mercies are new every morning, right? I imagine it almost like a spiral staircase, right? So, so, oh, today I saw and I felt God's love and tomorrow, wow, look at his grace. Oh, wow, I just, and you, and you keep going and then the next time you feel his love, it's like, wow, I didn't realize his love is, is even greater than what I, what I experienced before. His, his compassion is even more than what I knew before. His, his ability to heal is even greater than I had experienced before. Don't limit God with your previous experience. Don't limit God with what, like, I, I, want, I want this again, God, so I'm going to do this way again. Now, don't get me wrong. Habits are a good thing, right? Um, reading your Bible every day, please do it, okay? But why? Not so that you can, you can get something. Not so that you can, God is not your genie in the sky to, to, to ask him to do whatever you want to do because that's not how this works, you pray every day because I love the Lord and I want to spend time with him. I read the word every day because I want to get to know him. Because he reveals himself to me. He shows me 
who he is. He teaches me his love. He teaches me. He leads and guides me. It's not, Lord, I'm going to pray today so that my business can succeed tomorrow. Don't get me wrong. Pray for your business to succeed tomorrow. That's not a bad thing. But pray to get to know the Lord. And in those prayers, speak the things that you care about. Speak the things that you need. Woo, okay. We're traveling down a little hole that I I don't know if I want to jump out yet. You know, I'm like, this is good. Yeah, let's go there. All right, we're going to do it. Sorry. I do it because I love you, okay? Um, Genuinely. You're not, pastor said it last, last week or two weeks ago. He talked about putting the, putting the bike in the garage doesn't make the bike a car, right? Please come to church every week. But sitting in the pew or sitting in the seat does not make you a Christian. Please serve in ministry. It's fantastic. We need it. We pray. Lord, send workers into the harvest field so that we can reach everybody. But even serving in ministry will not make you a Christian. Please give your tithe. It's what the Lord asks you to do. But just because you give your tithe does not mean that you're a Christian. Because it's not by what I do. It's by what he has done. Come on. That's what Paul's talking about when he's addressing the Galatians. He's saying, listen, it's not by all the things that you do that is causing you to go to heaven. That's not going to cut it at all. Instead, it's by what Christ has done for you. As I was studying, I I went to Romans chapter 7, and I want to take you there. And it's real good. And I'm already running out of time. I have about an eight-hour message, okay? But I'm squeezing it down. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got out on time. But man, I say that in all seriousness because go home and read the Bible. It's really good. And God, I mean, if you don't know that, trust me, you need to know that. Like, it is so good. This is the, this is the word of God, and he wants to reveal things to you. And I tell you what, he was revealing some good stuff to me as I was preparing for this. It was a lot of fun. So I have eight hours of content that we're squeezing down into the next 30 minutes. It's going to be fantastic, all right? Hold on to your seatbelts. Here we go, Romans chapter 7. It's the same issue that, that Paul's dealing with here that he's dealing with in the Galatians. They're struggling with doing and the sin that's, that's working in them. And Here we go, beginning in verse 14. I'm reading from the NLT, by the way. Uh, I can tell you later why. It's so I can understand it. That's why. Okay. Sometimes big words are difficult, especially in deep content like this. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I'm all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Listen, sometimes we we talk about sin as if I've messed up. Yes, but sin is here to drag you to death. Sin is here to enslave you. That's what he said. I am a slave to sin. Do not play with sin. Sin is not your pet. Sin is not your friend. Sin is not the thing that you want to keep hidden over on the side. You want to run from sin. You want to flee from sin. What is sin? Sin is breaking the law of God. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. For I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Can you hear the battle? Do you feel the battle sometimes? Listen, I I am up here, but I am not perfect, okay? 
as, as some would say, the struggle is real, right? Like, the battle is real. The, but there's hope. We're going to get there. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there's another power, remember that, there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Listen to the strong language he's using. This power is at war, making me a slave. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Some of you remember, oh, what a wretched. Like that is just gut felt. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? What he's saying is, who can help me? Because I can't help me. Because I tried. You tried, right? Like uh, I, I had somebody tell me one time, Nate, of all the problems that you have, if you could have fixed them, wouldn't you have done it already? You better believe I'd have done it. Like I work hard enough, I'd have done it. I can't fix it. I can't do it. You can't do it. Who can save me? Here's one of the greatest verses of all time. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not in me. It's not in you. It's in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Don't stop reading. Keep going. Even though there's chapters, keep going. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. You belong to Jesus free from sin. No condemnation. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit, the power of the life-giving spirit, not no more the power of the sinful nature. No more the power of death, right? The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You are free. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have, and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did it. He did it. Verse four, he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. It's not by what we have done, but it's by what he has done done. Amen. So we got to grab that first. If we get this first, we can move on. Ephesians 2, 8, you need to know this verse. It's not by anything else that you've been saved, but it's by grace through faith so that no one can boast. It's by grace through faith, faith in Jesus Christ who has paid the price for your sins, for my sins. He bore them on his back, right? He carried the cross for us so that we could be saved. Now we got that. You believe in Jesus. Now we can start to live and walk the way we need to live and walk because it's not up to us. Listen, I need you to grab this. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. So what happens? What do we need? We accept Jesus into our life. I think a couple things happen, and I think I'm going to take you through what would be a dot man. If you just read, read the book of Romans. Okay, go home today, just read it, all right? Enjoy it. It's really good. But if you fast forward a little bit into Romans chapter 12, the first thing pops up that I think needs to happen when you accept Jesus as your Savior. You need to begin to think a little differently. Got to think differently. Here we go. We're going to read Romans 12, and it gets real good. Beginning at verse, we're just going to read two verses, verse 1 and 2. 
says this. This is like his, he's, he's continued to talk and talk and talk about all the things that, and he comes to this moment in 12. He's like, and so, like, here it is. Pay attention. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. Okay, okay. Remember what, what they had to do before, right? For sacrifices, for cleansing. And Paul says, now, you offer yourself as a living, holy sacrifice. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Some of you may have memorized it this way. Be, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, we have got to start thinking differently. We gotta think differently. It's not by my own ability, it's not by my own power. The, here's the thing, our mind ruins us. So many of our own, like just think of your natural struggles, the things that happen in life. Our mind is the hardest thing. You got a, you got a difficult conversation with an employee coming up, with a coworker coming up. You spend the next 12 hours tormenting yourself in your own mind as to how this thing is going to go. And then you get there, and it's nice, and it's chill, and you're like, oh, good, because you've been like killing yourself and killing them all in your mind, right? Our mind torments us. We think everybody's thinking about us when nobody's thinking about us. <laughs> we think everybody saw it when nobody saw it. And we, your mind is the voice you hear the most in, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you can begin to think differently, man, if you can let God transform the way you think and now he's speaking to you, woo, that will transform your life. God's saying, allow me to transform the way you think. It's not up to you. It's not up to your own ability. You, you can't be good enough. You can't earn it. Don't even try. You can't be good enough. You can't work to get your salvation. Your salvation is not based on works anyway. It's based on faith in Jesus Christ. I said it earlier, but coming to church does not make you a Christian. Serving in ministry, it's great. Doesn't make you a Christian. Only faith in Jesus. I, I believe what, when we do those things, sometimes we probably just have it backwards, okay? We think that our actions will determine what's inside our heart or that our actions will change what's inside our heart. But I think what God is really after, he's like, hey, let me have your heart and then I will change your actions. Let me have what's on the inside. Let me, let me have your mind, and then I will change your actions. Let me have what's, what's going on in here, and then allow me to work through you out here. Don't get it backwards. Doing will not make you become, but if you become, it will cause you to do. If you become what Jesus has asked you to become, if you accept him, as Savior, the do will follow. Why? Because it's a relationship. Because I long to please my Heavenly Father. See, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's good. So I long to please my Savior because I love the relationship. It's not a burden, it's a joy, it's a privilege. So we realize this what happens? You think differently, you get to live differently. Go back a little bit, Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 10. 
This is what living differently looks and feels like and sounds like. And Christ lives within you. Wow. Listen, if we could just get a hold of that for a second, that the God of all the universe created it all, wants to have a relationship with somebody like us. He says, and Christ lives within you. So much to be that close within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. That's life. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. He's living in you to give you the life. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. No obligation. What does that mean? Remember, he was just saying, I was a slave to sin. Now I am free. No obligation anymore. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. By whose power? Mm, that's comforting. Not by my power. Remember, it was a power that I could not control before. That's what he was saying in Romans, Romans 7, right? I would do what I, I want. I want to do these things, but I can't do them. So I, what a wretched man I am. And then right here he says, but if through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature. It's his power that's living in me that can put to death, that can nail to the cross what Paul was saying in Galatians chapter five, the sinful nature, and leave it there. You will live. Verse 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. This is who you are. When you are living in the spirit, you are a child of God. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. Okay, let's go there. God is omniscient, omnipotent. Like he is all-knowing. He is, he's so big. You can't, like I can't even put words to it right now. The God who created all of this, the God who, who spoke into existence, not just the world, the, the, not just the earth, the universe, and so much more, is calling you his child. What a revelation! I'm a child of God. Okay, so I, I told you before, I think I, had, I have three kids and my youngest disappeared somewhere. That's okay. I mean, he didn't like disappear. My wife took him away. Uh, he's one and some change. I don't, I don't know the months. Like, he's one and some change. I love him. Okay, he's great. But he can't talk yet. I mean, he says like mama and stuff. But he comes up to me. He loves me. He's, I think I'm his favorite. <laughs> he comes up to me and he whacks me. Bah, 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 until I look down and pay attention to him. And he's like. Oh, that's the sweetest. And I pick him up and he's just smiling or he lays his head down, like all, all these things. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this kid is, like he's, it's, it's so great. That is the relationship Paul is talking about when he says we can call God, the creator of the universe, Abba, Father. You can come to him and just, Like, my son, I can put him up here. He could run as fast as he can. He knows I'm going to catch him. Like, he's not going to fall, right? He knows I'm going to be there. There's no doubt in his mind. He doesn't go to bed at night. I mean, he wakes up a lot in the middle of the night because he's one. But he doesn't go to bed worrying about, is there going to be food tomorrow? Like, he knows I'm his dad. It's going to be fine. If dad's here, I'm good. 
That is the relationship we have with God. Would you rest in that? Would you realize that? Would you become, right? Would you grab a hold of that? So think differently, live differently. Now we can walk differently. When we realize who we are in Christ, let me go back. When, when we're living differently, listen, we're living in freedom. We're living without condemnation. We're living no longer a, a slave to sin or a slave to fear. or a sla- We are living in freedom because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Woo. I told you I could go eight hours. This is so good. All right. Walk differently. We're not. We're going to keep going. Walk differently. When you're living in the Spirit, Remember, remember last week I was walking around with Pastor, did I tell you that? I was walking around, we were like, last week, last week, two weeks ago, whatever. We were walking, me and him were walking around, he's like, this is, uh, this is what it's like when the Holy Spirit's walking with you. And we were like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Always with you. Here's the great, great, great part. Jesus is saying to you, listen, you don't have to carry the burden. You don't have to carry the burden of I got to do, I got to perform, I got I to gotta go here, I got to go there. You don't have to carry the burden. Because I'm walking with you. And I got the burden. What does he say in Matthew chapter 11? He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Teach me. Let, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear. Mm. And the burden I give you is light. Come on, like I, I just imagine I'm over here carrying this heavy, this heavy burden. And Jesus is like, oh. He stands up and he's just a little bit taller than I am, right? And it's, it's on him. And I'm just walking. I'm just being led by him. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to bear that burden anymore. I don't have to bear the burden of perfection because you've already borne the burden. Perfection died for me. Perfection died for you so that you and I can be saved simply by believing. And now we can just walk with him in that. And he says, the, what I give you is light. Listen, don't, don't carry the burden of I have to be perfect to make it to heaven. Ain't going to happen. You don't have to carry the weight of shame anymore because now there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. He carries it. He carries it. What does he promise to give us? For us to give us the Holy Spirit. He said, the burden I give you is light. And I'm just like, I wonder, Lord. <laughs> You've given me the Holy Spirit so I can walk with you, so I can live with you, so I can be reminded because the power in me is too great for me to conquer. But with you in me, with you in me, We can conquer all because it's him that's able to do it, not me. Because it's him that, is, that has the power, not me. Because it's him. Walk in the spirit. Walk in step with him. How do I walk in the spirit? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do I walk in the spirit? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do I walk in the spirit? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just yesterday. I need him today. I need him again. I need him continually. I need him overflowing. Because the things that I want to see produced in my life is not the fruit of Nathan, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. And so I need the, I need the Spirit in me to produce the fruit of the Spirit. I want to see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness flowing out of my life. I want to see that. And so I need the Holy Spirit today. 
to help me walk in that. I need the Holy Spirit today to fill me so that I can move in that. What happens when a little bit of Nathan pops up? A little bit of anger pops up. A little bit of frustration pops up. A little bit of pride pops up. A little bit of self-righteousness pops up. A little bit of you name it. I believe the Holy Spirit is revealing it so that he can deal with it. Because again, it's not by my power. I need him. So he's revealing it so we can deal with it. Surrender it to him. Lord, I don't want to see that in my life anymore. I've given that to you. Help me, Lord. Help me walk in your ways. Help me walk in your truth. Help me walk in your love. When I get frustrated, when I get self-righteous, when I get proud, when I get angry, I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. I'm not able to do it. The psalmist writes, created me a clean heart. He also writes, search me, O God. And know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. I need the Lord to lead me. You need the Lord to lead you. I can't do it on my own. But when I realize that it's not by my power, but it's by His. I'm free. You're free. You're free. Free to live in his love. Free to live in his spirit. Because the Holy Spirit at work in your life, because of the power working in and through you. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Father, we, we need you. Lord, as we're here today, I just ask, Lord, that anybody that, that's been trying to do, that's been trying to move, that's been trying to earn their salvation, Lord, that you would reveal your truth to them that you've already paid for it. All they need to do is receive you. All they need to do is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, reveal it to them right now. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, listen, you're here today and you need salvation. You recognize that you've been trying to do it all on your own. You've been working real hard to be saved, but you just keep falling short. But you recognize today that it's not by your own works, but it's by grace through faith. You're saying, Jesus, I'm coming to you and I'm, I'm, I'm giving up. I need you. You need the freedom Jesus is offering you. Right now, you just slip up your hand. I want to be able to pray with you and for you. Anywhere along this room. Amen. Perhaps you're like me. And you know the truth. You know that it's by what Christ is done, but you find yourself, just like with superstitions, you find yourself doing things as if to earn earn favor. And you feel the gentle nudge of the Holy Spirit saying, listen, I love you, period. You're coming today and you're like, you know what, Pastor Nate, I'm with you. I just I just need the Holy Spirit in my life. I I want a fresh encounter with him today. Listen, Jesus taught us when he taught us to pray, give us today our daily bread. And then later in John, he revealed he is the bread of life. And so I 
I think he's saying, hey, you need, you need some of me every day. You need me every day. You need a fresh word from me every day. You need a touch from me every day. So you're here today and you're like, you know what? Yes, Pastor Nate, that's me. I need a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit today. I need a fresh touch from Jesus today. I don't want to live off of yesterday's uh, I don't want to live off of yesterday's encounter. I don't want to live off of yesterday's experience. Yesterday was good, but I need Jesus today. I want him today. I need him today in my life. That's how you'll walk in the spirit. That's you today. Would you just slip up your hand real quick? I want to be able to pray over you. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Father, I pray for all these right here that have their hands raised. God, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that they would have a fresh encounter, a fresh touch. Lord, that they would hear your voice today. God, that they would seek your face today. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would move in our hearts today. We thank you, Jesus. Now, all around this room, would you just stand to your feet real quick? Stand up for me. Listen, I want to encourage you. Would you just begin to op open your mouth, begin to worship the Lord, begin to praise him for who he is. I'll shut my mic off so that you can do it, okay? Just begin to praise him and honor him and thank him for who he is. Come on now, lift up your... Now begin to thank him. Begin to call upon him as he, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Begin to praise him and thank him that he's the God of the universe is willing to call you son and daughter. Come to your father. Come to your father. Thank you, Lord. before.